So here's how we get a UART example working um, with Atmel Studio. So what you need is to begin with, there's this UART utility function. So I'm gonna download that. Um, and if you're not on Brightspace, this is also mirrored to the um, GitHub for um, the introduction to Arduino Nano. So it's also located on here. Um, so this UART utility function dot C. So we just download this file somewhere. We then make a new project as before. So you can see the other video for more details on this setup. I'm gonna assume you've already got the um, download and everything working. I'm gonna call it something new, maybe your project. I'm gonna say ATmega32AP. And then we get our default project. So what we need to do now is we need to add our file to this project. So we have to go over to this right window and click the Solution Explorer. We then highlight the UART project. Oops, don't edit it and right click on it. And I'm gonna hit Add Existing Item. Um, so this is gonna let me add this C file to the project so it all compiles it together. Now what I need is I need wherever I just downloaded that. And I'm just gonna get that UART utility functions.c. So it's now added to the project. So now if I compile, it's gonna actually compile this, this file in with it. Um, all we need to do is we need to call init UART from our main function. And this will need a C prototype, so I'm gonna copy that there. And then I'm gonna add init UART at the beginning. So I can check that this builds okay. And we see in the bottom here, one succeeded. So right now it's not actually doing anything. Um, so what we wanna do is we wanna make it a little more interesting. I'm gonna have it print something at startup. Um, so what we need to do is we need to do add standard io.h into this guy. Um, and we could add, for example, um, and we don't want it to go print, if it prints forever, it'll print very quickly. So we're gonna use like a printf Hello world, just a classic. Let's see if we can get this through our, our terminal emulator. And I'll say build, build solution, builds okay. Um, then what we need to do, so I have my, my nano connected and I just hit nano download. Um, this is gonna download and always check it says okay. Um, finally, to talk to this device, we're gonna use something called putty. So we just need a terminal emulator. There's different ones you can use. Um, so this one here is a pretty uh, straightforward one. Um, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna say this is a serial port. It's on COM3. We have a bot of 9600. We have to do a bit of configuration though before I hit open. Um, I wanna go to the serial portion here and put flow control to none. And I wanna go to the terminal setting and say implicit um, carriage return in every line feed, CR and LF. This is just more standard for normal terminals. And I'm gonna force a local uh, echo to be on, which is useful when we use scanf to see our results back here. And I then hit open. So it then gives me this terminal here. Um, and you can see it actually says hello world. So um, if we want to see the device boot up, all we do is one easy way to do it is to actually hit the reset button on the device and it's gonna take a second and then it's gonna reboot. So the reset button is the only other button on the Nano, the Arduino Nano. So you can see every time I click that, it resets. Um, so that's basically the idea here. Now what we might wanna do is get something a little more interesting. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, in this Yard example, there's a more complete code that actually does some, uh, some different stuff. So I'm just gonna copy that to the project and I'm gonna run that code instead. And so this code is gonna give me the build date and time. So you can always see as your code um, it is working and you can see we've already got an error. It's happened. I've forgotten to include um, util slash delay dot h. There we go. So you should define the FCPU so that delay is accurate. Uh, which you can do at the project level, but it's just easy to do this way.
Okay. Now, if I just run tools nano download, I'm actually going to get an error. You'll see can't open device access denied. That's because I'm using it over here. Um, so what you should do is you should go up here. You can either just close the window um, or I can end the session. Um, which I don't think there's actually a commander. So I'm just going to close it right here. Um, so we close this session. Now, if I run the download, it's going to work. So you got to be a little careful that you always have to close the putty window. And you can see this is quite a bit bigger of a file because we've got a lot more stuff going on here. Now let's open Putty again. So all of a sudden you realize it's kind of annoying because I've got to go reconfigure all this stuff. Um, so what you might want to do before I hit open is... Um, save this. So if I go back to Session, I can actually give this guy a name and say you are and hit Save. So I highly recommend that. And now you can just double click on this and it's gonna to connect to it. So there we go. So you can see we get a build time now. So as we rebuild the software, you can always check that we actually are programming it. Um, so if I call myself Carl, let's say, what is a number? Um, and then it's just outputting the status of pin D. So if we were to change the value of pin D, you'll actually see those, those change. So, so that's all. This is a really simple yield example, but you can see all of a sudden we can debug our, our programs and get a lot more information um, out of them than if we were just stuck with looking at like an LED toggle or something like that.